Hey everyone, Michael from Xano here. In this tutorial, I wanna talk about separating data, which is a very uh, common feature you might wanna build in your application and specifically your backend uh, where your logic and database is. So when I talk about separating data, uh, what I mean in essence is, uh, so for example, in our database, uh, we build it a multi-tenant way, meaning uh, we have our user table where we have all our different users, right? Like here, right here, I have three different users. Uh, and then we have other tables where our user data is all mixed and matched, right? So for example, I have this items table. You can see there's different items in here, but we also have this table reference to our user table saying that each of these items belongs to a specific user. And depending on the type of application you're building, when a user logs into your application and they go ahead and, and look at their items, they're only able to or only supposed to see uh, the items that belong to them, right? You don't want user two seeing users one data or even being able to uh, say edit or update user one data. You want user two just be able to manipulate their own data and see their own data. Okay, so how do we actually go about building that uh, in Xana? Well, it's pretty easy. So let's go ahead and uh, jump to the API and I can show you a few examples here. Uh, so first let's talk about reading data, right? So I'm going to open this items endpoint here, and this just queries all the records from that items table. You can see when I go to run and debug this, what we get back is we get all of the items regardless of what user they belong to. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually require authentication on this endpoint. So I'm just going to click here, open the settings, and select user authentication. And what that does is it means now this... Uh, someone to run this endpoint needs to actually be a authenticated user uh, in your application. So they have to be a user that signed up. They have to go in, put in their correct credentials, and then Xano will give them uh, an authentication token, which is this encrypted token that tells the backend that this user has valid credentials. Uh, in that token is stored a unique user ID, so we know what user that is. So for example, if I try and go and run this now, you can see it requires an auth token. If I hit run, says this field is required in Xano, we can very easily grab one of those tokens. Let's say I grab user two here. And if I run this, well now I can run the endpoint, we still get all the user records back, or all the items records back, regardless of what user they belong to. Um, but now what we can do is because we have this auth token, we have that user ID. So I can go about filtering these records. So if I click on this query all records function here, and go to the filter tab, I can add a conditional to actually filter these records. And when I hit this drop down, we can see this items.userID field in our database table. And I can set this equal to, well, if I go to auth here or just type in auth, we can see auth ID. So once again, in that encrypted token, we have the unique user ID. So I can go ahead and hit save. And now when I run this, we're still on user two here. I should just see the items that belong to user ID two. And you can see that both there. Uh, if I go back and I switch this, let's say to user one, uh, now still two records, but the records changed. And these are only the records that belong to user ID one. Um, we can even put uh, some additional security steps in here. And uh, this just kind of shows how much control you really have in the function stack in Xano. So for example, what we could do is we could first, I'm just adding a new function stack item. We could first go ahead and do a get record and we could get that user object. And how we can look that up is once again, that authenticated user ID. And now this gives us access to this entire user object in here. I could hit save and I can drag this to the top now. And now I could even set a precondition which just enforces that something is true. So if I go to utility functions, precondition, and I can just add an extra layer of security here just to say uh, where that user object that we pulled, and I can use dot notation to say the ID in there, uh, is equal to the authenticated user ID. And it really always should be in this case, um, but this is just an added layer of security, if you will. You could even add uh, an error message in here, a custom one, uh, different error types, etc. I'll just leave the standard in there for now. And you'll notice I can still run this, um, and it should be fine. So that's still user ID one, we still get uh, the items that belong to user ID one, we can go ahead and grab three now. And you can see, we just have the items that belong to user ID three. So that is um, making sure the user is basically reading or pulling the data that only belongs to them. Um, pretty straightforward with uh, how we 
turned on user authentication. Now we filter the records based on that authenticated user ID. So what about actually, let's say manipulating or updating records, right? So let's go back and I'm gonna jump to this uh, post here, which uh, actually edits a record. Um, so let's break this down first. So first, obviously we take in our inputs. So we put in the item that we actually wanna edit. That's the items ID. And my scheme is pretty simple here. So we just have the title to update. Um, so the first thing we do is we're gonna actually get the item record uh, that we want to actually update. And why we wanna do that is because we need to see what user it belongs to before we let uh, whoever's trying to edit a record actually edit it, right? So we just doing a get record, we're looking it up based on that items ID and you can see in this items object, there is that user ID, which we can access. And that's exactly what we're gonna do in the next step, which is another precondition here. So if we look uh, at this precondition, we can see we're taking the items underscore one variable using dot notation to grab the user ID and making sure that it's equal to the uh, unique user ID that's stored in that authentication token. So we're doing that auth ID, okay? And so we can see there's an error message that says, sorry, this is not your item. Um, but if this passes, then we're free to go ahead and edit that record. Uh, we just have that title mapped up. So for example, let's go ahead and uh, do an example here. So let's say items ID one, I forget what user this belongs to. So um, I'll just say something like hello there. Let's say uh, user ID one. So I grabbed the auth token for user one. We run this and we hit the precondition. So sorry, this is not your item. Okay, no problem. Let's try with pretending we're user ID two here. So if I run this, you can see this actually runs. Uh, the title got updated to low there. You can see that user ID was in fact user ID two. Um, so there you have it. That's another example, just how you can enforce that the user is only editing uh, their own records. You can of course apply this to delete, uh, et cetera. But as you can see, you have a lot of control in the function stack over adding you know, additional security layers. Uh, making sure you're enforcing separate data so users are only seeing and manipulating the data that belongs to them. Of course, there's also uh, role-based access control or restricting access based on permissions. Uh, now we have a full write-up and tutorial in our documentation on that. That's like if you have um, different roles for your users, say you have an admin that has different access, maybe they can access everyone's records or certain amounts and there's uh, just different roles and based on those roles, they have different permissions. So. If that's interesting, also go check that out in the documentation, but you can kind of see a little flavor of that here, uh, basically in separating data. So hopefully that was helpful. That's a very common feature. Um, if you found this video helpful, please like the video, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you guys in the next tutorial.